My name's Peter, um, and I work for the innovation team in the UK for Cisco. So we are based normally in the public sector team, but we do funded research activities with a mix of different partners from all sorts of different verticals. Um, we do that using government money, um, so we can do proof of concepts and demonstrators at scale as a reference case that we can then use to exploit across a number of different markets. What we're going to talk to you about today is an approach we're taking to social Wi-Fi, which is a combination of uh, the skills that Oliver will talk about um, with a local social network platform, and combining that with a Wi-Fi proposition for a small defined area, so a high street, town centre and so on. The reason we're looking at, at that as a model is that we think Wi-Fi is easy to do if you're in a big urban centre, and that tends to be the model that you find service providers looking at. But actually, we're missing a trick because we're disenfranchising a whole range of, of urban areas that could benefit from this. And actually, we can provide a different value proposition for those locations using the capabilities of CMX and Meraki and so on that can expand the footprint for Wi-Fi uh, to any urban centre, probably in any location. So. We will talk about, well, I say we, it's mainly going to be Oliver talking, and I'll come and pitch in at the end. But what we're going to do is give you the story of their journey, the social network, the local social network, and how that is finding an angle against the existing, uh, existing market players. We'll talk about them, the way we're going to use analytics and the Wi-Fi to augment what they're doing for the local environment. Um, we'll give you some examples of some use cases that we're looking at and some areas we're working in. And then finally, we'll give you the, the punchline of it, which is the, the idea of the network of networks for, for, for communities across the country. So I hand over. Oliver, all yours. Good morning. Um, it's by no means the largest group of people I've ever spoken to, but it's not the smallest either. So um, <laughs> thank you again mirror those uh, thanks from Peter for turning up this early. It's um, probably been rather difficult for people. I'm here to talk to you guys about community and I think what's really interesting about community is it's often one of the components that's left out of the discussion about Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi can often be a proposition that's incredibly technical in its, um, in its foundation and people spend a lot of time considering what needs to be done with Wi-Fi to be benefit you know, its reach and how well it works technically, but also it enables um, a whole load of techniques to make it valuable to the businesses who foster that Wi-Fi network, to the local authorities that own those networks. Well, back when we started, um, way, way back four years ago, we started with the idea that actually Social media networks, which you can imagine many big names like Facebook, are all about global networking and building up huge networks of individuals. Well, we felt that there was an, uh, an opportunity in the marketplace to look at the idea of a hyper-local network. And based in Glasgow, although I'm not Scottish, I work for a company based in Glasgow, um, we decided to build a social media network just for the people of Glasgow. And um, we've seen a great deal of success with that. And what we've learned along the way over four years is how you build beautiful user journeys, how you build um, engagement and traction in a local community through fantastic content that's created by and fostered by the local population. Um, in a bid to try to see that population of our, of our social media network grow, we started playing around with some things with Wi-Fi, and we came at it from a position of no actual experience, really. So we were tinkering with some Cisco kit. It was Meraki MR16s, uh, actually. And um, we took the opportunity to put those into local cafes. The aim of, of it was to use those Wi-Fi devices as points of acquisition for new users. It was a pretty basic concept at the time, we weren't really sure how it was going to work, and we were surprised at how successful it was at generating new users for our platform. But what was really critical was that we started to see people integrating, not only because they wanted Wi-Fi, but also because they started to see benefit coming from that content which we had spent so long building 
a, a wealth and, a, and a, a momentum of content generation. And so what we were essentially doing was getting our great content into new eyeballs, which is something that a lot of people coming from the Wi-Fi proposition from a technical standpoint don't have is that wealth of content that gets the interest and gets the engagement on the platform. So our landing page is part and parcel of that and it's what's really important to us is that we've got a very short period of time from when a user doesn't have the internet and is in their local environment to a point where they do have the internet and we want to just capture as much attention as we can from those local users to bring them hyper-local content and hyper-local interest and see our platform grow to benefit not only users but also other stakeholders in the local communities. So um, what I mentioned earlier was something that we think is very important. If you are a local coffee shop in Milan and you are an independent retailer and you have a Google page, and you also have a Facebook page and a Twitter page, and no matter how much you ask your customers to join you on Facebook, join you on Twitter, actually making yourself heard on those huge platforms is a really, really difficult proposition. So, you know, we felt that that's great. Facebook's fantastic. It does a lot of things for a lot of people. But if you're a business, and particularly if you're a small business, how are you going to make yourself heard above the noise of these huge businesses who have massive amounts of resource to throw at um, search engine optimization for Google, at staff who spend all their time blogging and posting on Facebook and Twitter? If you're that small ca coffee shop owner, you don't have number one, the wherewithal, and number two, the resources to make that happen. So we just describe that as how are you going to make yourself heard? How are you going to make yourself heard above the noise? So what we started to see coming was an interesting dynamic out of having that Wi-Fi proposition, which was actually, if I'm a user of the internet in that immediate locale, I'm associating to an access point. We know where that access point is. So we can start making some assumptions based on the, the access point's locality. It's in a coffee shop. Well, it's also next door to a shoe shop. It's also up the road from the swimming pool. It's also next door to all manner of different things in the local community. That starts bringing us a great deal of insight into what that user's interest could be. If you then start throwing in things like time of day, weather conditions, all manner of other variables, you can start building up a picture of what would be quite an interesting piece of content to put in front of that person. And that's before you've even asked them questions that you may or may not want to ask them, like, what's your age? What's your demographic status? Can we make you an even more customized feed of content for you in your local environment? So even just with remedial information, you've got the ability to put a pretty customized vision of your local environment in front of a person. And that answers, I think, one of the biggest questions. How do you make yourself heard? Well, as the small coffee shop, how relevant is it to make yourself heard in the United States if you're based in Milan? Actually, you want to make yourself heard to the people walking past your shop, much the same as you always have in the past with a cheese board. You know those, those boards you put outside your shop? This is a digital version of that, hopefully. But it's so much more than that. Um, because... If you imagine we've now got coffee shops, shoe shops, we've got swimming pools, we've got libraries in Milan working together, well actually we're hoping that this is going to be taken up by Bologna, we hope it's going to be taken up by Roma, all of the big cities. Well what we start seeing is if the local council of Milan has had success with a program reaching out to the local community, they can then start sharing that information with other cities and other town councils to make sure that those benefits are seen across the whole of Italy. Obviously, what's important um, in, this, in these growing times of awareness of data protection and security is who owns that data, who runs the data, who's the provider, and who's the, who's the um, network owner. Well, our hopes are and we're still working with Cisco Create and indeed Innovate UK at the moment, and we're hoping to bring in partners, big internet service providers, a wealth of, of cooperative businesses to help, see, help us steer through this maze 
but the aim is always going to be give the data ownership to the network owner, i.e. Milan, Bologna, and they can then start to understand their data themselves, rather than it being an edict from upon high from someone like Facebook who says, these are the inf informations that we've gleaned from your network and here's some trifling bits of information. We're saying, let them have the data, let them have the insight, let them see how it works and let them protect it. So whilst Collective Works, which is the platform on which all of this is built, will have an overarching network, the aim is that each node, each city, each town, each village is its own network provider and its own network security. Um, what is the technology? Well, essentially imagine that back four years ago we had decided to build Facebook from scratch. Well, that's essentially what we did, although it's far less sophisticated in the data mining side of, of the technology. Where Facebook and many other people are into hoarding as much data on as many people as possible and then taking huge, huge, huge assumptions and, and insights from that and selling that data insight on, that was never what we were trying to do. What we were trying to do was create community cohesion and create an interest in, in local pieces of content. Now, what we've done is built essentially the user interface component of Facebook, but for a local population. So you'll see we've got the technology has the ability to be extendable. It's, it's certainly scalable. We're building SDKs and APIs to enable other people to build products that bolt on to our solution. So imagine, for instance, that we managed to give this proposition to Milan then the developers of Milan would be able to build solutions and apps directly to Collective Works that suit their particular city's needs. And then potentially they might be able to go and market that to Bologna, they might be able to market to Naples, wherever else. Um, the Wi-Fi acquisition part was something that we obviously had to do in the early days, um, just by hook or by crook, learning on the, on the fly. It was only then, after having proven that we could use a bridge essentially from Meraki MR16 to our social media network, which we had managed to make, make work by hashing it together, that we met Cisco Create for the first time. That's when we started to see the benefits of being integrated into the Cisco world. And really, to this day, we're still learning so much. But as an SME, with the backing of Cisco Create, we've been able to take our small ideas about building hyper-local networks for Glasgow and start thinking about it on a global scale. And that's one thing that I'd like to take, you know, put into this. It's not really just a plug, it's, it's something that's really helped benefit our business. Um, and that's, that's really what's really important about the technology is that it's, in, it's incredibly scalable and could go global. But what's, you know, a big question for people often is, well, how am I going to create the content how am I going to create the, the know-how? Well, the reach and the know-how about the network comes through the Wi-Fi. So that's another benefit of the Wi-Fi. Ordinarily, if I gave you a social media network off the bat, completely without any Wi-Fi integration and no access points in any cafes that are bridges to that network, you would find yourself scratching your head and saying, how am I going to make people know about this? Well, the answer would be marketing. The answer would be PR. And it would probably cost a lot of money. What we're saying is put these access points into all of the businesses in your local community and let that be your marketing and your PR. Make your content speak for you and make it speak for you through these nodes inside your town or city. Um, how are you going to create that content? Well, we're expecting many things to contribute to the content. The business owners can't be relied upon because actually many business owners don't have the interest in creating loads of content because guess what, they've got to run their coffee shop or they've got to run their shoe shop or whatever else. And that takes time. Um, so what we expect actually is that the local community are going to start building their content streams. They're going to start saying, I'm, running, I'm creating a running club. We meet at seven o'clock on a Thursday outside this cafe. You'll be able to geolocate that trigger that will then enable other people who are sitting in the next door cafe to learn about that running club on Thursdays. Guess when they're going to learn about it? They're going to learn about it when they're having a coffee on a Thursday. It's going to come up that there's a running club that meets outside the coffee shop at 5 o'clock. Great. How else would you have found out about that? Well, I don't know. You'd probably have to scour the internet and find something and you may or may not be successful. This is about finding a local 
vision for rele relevance that we believe is very difficult for some of the other networks to succeed with without this Wi-Fi component. And I think that's what's really important. It gives you not only the reach, but also because people have a genuine will to build cohesion in and amongst their communities, a cohesion that's been lost over the past few decades, we expect that this will be a place where content's generated. And that will snowball, and slowly but surely, you'll see the content speaking for itself. And the onus will not be on the council, it will not be on the local businesses. Um, stone components and services. Well, whilst I would like to probably talk about this to the end of the earth, Perhaps, Peter, you'd like to um, speak to this slide. Yeah. yeah, so we really like the social story on this because what I think we've seen with other urban Wi-Fi propositions is that it gets very quickly into what benefit is it for the retailer, uh, what can we do on the analytics and the tracking, how can we just focus on that element to it. And normally also that the big cities, it's about tourists, it's about providing people with information and so on. And actually, you, you, they're missing a trick by only focusing on those elements. Actually, the social side of that, about the people and about the place, is a far richer environment where there's already an existing social network. It's a real thing. And actually, we can build a lot of value on top of that. So traditionally, what you would find is that you would do the Wi-Fi network, and then you're providing internet access, a bit of advertising, maybe some location-based services, and probably looking to do some small sales solution off the back of that to get some money from a mobile operator. Certainly in the UK, that's, some, that's the model that we've seen. And frankly, it hasn't worked. Uh, revenues just don't exist with that model. People don't pay for free Wi-Fi. Uh, the advertising is minimal. Um, and as for the small sales, yeah, maybe that'll take off next year. That's always the prediction, right? It just hasn't quite worked out. So we know that in the UK, the service providers need a new model. We also know that when you start looking at this for European cities where you have a slightly different environment, where you've got uh, local councils and authorities who are able to run these networks, which we can't do in the UK, there's still a need to find the local value out of that. And that's where looking at the side of community comes in. And actually, when you start to engage with those, with those communities, well, that's people that actually you don't get a lot of contact with if you're a local authority often. You, know, you have a certain section of society that is the, vast, the user of the vast majority of your services as a local authority. And actually, you need to be able to reach other people and use a lot of the other things that they are creating for the community, the third sector support operations, uh, you know, the, the mills and wheels, the, the local fitness clubs, things like that that are you could do much more to leverage when you've got reduced funding. So we think that the model breaks down a bit like this. Obviously, you do internet access, and that's, that's obviously core. Cool. That's why people want the Wi-Fi. But also, because you're laying on the social network, you're then building in those groups, you're building in the communities, you're looking at how you can support the organization and orchestration of those. And then on top of that, we layer on the analytics. So Kilter have been, uh, Collective Works have been experimenting with uh, Meraki access points. We're also looking at how we can use the enterprise with CMX. Um, and if you haven't been down to see the, uh, the CMX guys downstairs, I thoroughly recommend doing that. And once we put that on top, then we can start to do some interesting things for the local authority with their decision support systems. Because we can give them information about where people are, time of day, flow rates, ingress, egress from the city. We can help them with local planning applications. We can look at the transport use for that. And we can build up a rich picture for them of exactly how their city is operating. And it's the type of information they try to capture already. So they put rubber strips on the floor to try and get the flow rates of traffic. Actually, you don't need to do that. In the same way, they put people on the street with a clipboard and a clicker to count the number of people that come through. And it's part of their KPIs for how they're promoting their city, how the marketing operation for the city is working. Again, you don't need to do that. We can give you that in real time. And then we're looking at how we can democratize the type of analytics that we as a company already give to large retailers. So if you're a big retailer, We've given you CMX already. You're then tracking people through your store. You're using that to optimize your layout. You're using that to engage customers before they leave without buying anything. You're checking out people who are showrooming. Can you do something about that? You can do instantaneous vouchers and redemptions at point of sale. And we've, we've done a lot of that for large retailers, but you can't get that into a single small, small SME. However, if we can do that at an aggregate for all of them, then we can make that viable. 
and we can give them opportunities that they didn't have before. So not only can we measure their footfall and their conversion rates from the, the window, you know, your window display, has that made a difference? Your local advertising campaign, if we know when you, you spent that money, have we seen a change in the footfall rate in your, in your, in your store? But also you can go beyond that, because now we can know, okay, people that shop at your store also shop here and here and here. So if we know someone that shopped here, here and here, we can tell them they would probably enjoy shopping here. We can give them cross-promotion opportunities that you don't really leverage, but there is a willingness to do that. In the UK, we've got a lot of structures that help local businesses come together to promote their environment. You can get money from the local government to invest in normally street works to beautify the place, but actually increasingly we're seeing them come towards more digital solutions that do things to encourage people in and try to capture an element of loyalty and so on. And that brings us to the next element, which is, we call it the engagement engine because we don't want to call it advertising. Um, but with the tools that you have through the analytics, actually we can do some really clever things for those local businesses that give them advertising opportunities that are directly relevant to their business. So as an example, if you're a sandwich shop and you've got a bus stop outside your store, you can't advertise on that bus stop because you need to have a long a relationship with someone like a JC Deco. Um, that's a, they're not going to look at you because they want to do this on the mass. They want to sell that to a talk talk brand or a Virgin Media brand and have that paid for for the next six months, a year. However, that area of real estate is highly valuable to you in a very specific time window. So you want to advertise to people who are walking past that bus stop between 12 and 2. Through this platform, we can allow you to do that. We can send the notification in to the smartphone as people are in your area, between the area, between that time frame when people will be wanting to buy lunch. We can also then use it as a promotional tool to get people back in, and that's the kind of standard you know, marketing tools. I'll speed up because we've got five minutes left. And then we're interested in the loyalty side of it because what we want to do is get people in and get people coming back and increasing spend rates, return rates, and so on. It's about growing the local economic uh, environment. And the, the, the Oliver and his team have come up with a very, very clever solution on loyalty that is able to aggregate everything that uh, uh, all the spend rates within those participating local businesses. So existing loyalty schemes tend to be about one business. And you're, if you're a coffee shop, you're giving the 10th coffee for free once someone's got nine stamps on their card. How do you make that translate into someone else's business? So if you've bought nine coffees there, can you redeem your 10th coffee somewhere else? And actually providing a cooperative model. And using the tools that they've developed, we're going to be able to do that. And finally, you can still sell MLOs. You can still sell small cell solutions if you like. We don't think that that's going to be the maker for the business model in the next two or three years. We think the value is in those local interactions and getting the community built into the Wi-Fi. Now, we're in the DevNet zone, so we thought we had to put something technical on as the last slide. But this just captures how we're moving information around, how that's being controlled by Collective Works as a hub, how we're going to protect the end user from nuisance, from the pestering, from you know, pervasive advertising. It's not about that. It's all about the user experience. And that's why at Cisco, we, we're very interested in this model because a lot of what we've done using CMX doesn't necessarily start with the user journey. It starts with what you want the user journey to be if you were a retailer. And that's a subtly different thing. But actually, if you focus this on what people are actually interested in and what their needs are, what it is about the local community that engages them, then you've got something that's much a, stick, a much stickier proposition. And you don't want to trample on that model with, uh, uh, with a user experience that just bombards them with communications. You've got to have a way to filter that and control the access. I think we'll there. We've got a couple of minutes. We're going to be trying this in the UK. Um, we've got a couple, of, uh, a couple of market towns who are very interested in, in how they can use this to do things differently. 
we're really interested in how these things develop and evolve over time. So the loyalty scheme will start to look a bit like, for example, a local currency with a tradable value linked to the, linked to the uh, domestic market. We also think we can use it to do a lot of things for public services. So the big stretch at the moment is on social care in the UK. If you can use this as a platform to mobilise and engage an entire third sector support system, then you can start to do something about that. So you can start to use it for social good and social policy goals. We'll end there. Um, so we're going to be on the uh, Innovation Centre stand um, throughout the day, if you'd like to come and talk to us and, and find out a bit more. Um, just to say, uh, we're, Cisco Create is a, is a UK-based team. Um, we're happy to, uh, to work with anyone in the, in the UK who, uh, who's interested in doing something different um, and working with uh, Cisco Technologies. Um, but yeah, we'll be over on the stand. We'll be doing obviously a demo, we'll be able to show you how that works with the network they've, that Kilt have got up in Glasgow. Um, and, uh, and, and show you the onboarding process and then how the content flows uh, through you uh, into, uh, into that app. Thank you for your time.